Hello students, welcome to Study Live. In this lecture, we're going to talk about very interesting, important, but yet easy topic, which is nothing but introduction to polymer chemistry. Yes, student, this chapter is very easy if you study this properly. Yes, student. We will also going to discuss some kind of shortcut tricks also. How effectively you can memorize this topic very well. So for that, let's start the first important topic that is definition of polymer. Student, what we can say that if you can see on the screen, you have your textbook. Yes, on the screen. Uh, I want you to use your textbook with this session. So for that, I also want you to keep your textbook with you. So that you can also study with us. Yes, student. So first, let's discuss the definition of polymer. As the word suggests, we can say that chemically, polymers are complex macromolecules. If you can see on the screen, made from repeating units. So this is definition for polymer. If we break the word polymer, we can say that poly means many and mer means part or unit in the Greek language. This was all about definition of polymer. Polymer, they have given us the size of polymer. After that, after that, the important topic which is that, which is nothing but classification of polymer. Student, to understand the classification of polymer, I want you, I want you to come to this page that is table number 15.2. Let's understand the classification of polymer. First of all, briefly, we can say that polymers can be classified majorly into this six types. If you can see on the screen, first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So, student, for the next 10 to 15 minutes, we are going to discuss classification of polymers based on this six types. Yes, student? Why I am showing you this? So that you will have the better idea what we are actually studying. Okay. So classification of polymer, it's very important topic can be asked in the theory paper for two marks. Okay. They can ask you anything from this, maybe classify the polymer based on its structure. So you have to write this part. Yes. What is its, what is its explanation? Let's try to understand that part also. So again, come to the first page of this chapter. Okay. So first and important, if you can see, classification is done based on the source or the origin we can see. From where we are getting that polymer, it's very easy student. So can we say first and it is natural polymer. Okay. We are getting it from the nature. Now, as we had discussed polymer many monomers, many repeating units. Yes or no? They have combined together to form the polymer. Naturally, it is, we can obtain it from what? Naturally, we can obtain it from majorly two things. What are they? First and important from the plant and the another important is from animal. So, if they ask you classify the polymer based on its source or origin, so first it's natural polymer. In that, you have to write two plant and animal polymer. Next is synthetic polymer, but obvious it is not coming from nature. Humans have prepared it in the lab. So this is all about the synthetic polymer. You can give the example of synthetic polymer if you can see over here. Yes, detailed explanation how this polymer is made, we will study in this chapter only. Apart from that, they have the Semi-synthetic polymer. As the word suggests, student, just see over here. It's semi-synthetic. Means what? It has both natural polymer as well as the synthetic part. For MCQ student, remember this regenerated fiber. Yes. So what is that regenerated fiber? These are also called as regenerated fiber. Very important. So we can say that semi-synthetic polymer, regenerated fibers. Yes or no? Example they have given to us cellulose derivatives such as cellulose acetate, rayon, so and so forth. Okay. So this was all about classification, the first classification of polymer based on its source or origin. Yes or no, student? 
after that after that we have second type of classification that is based on the structure how the polymer is looking yes or no based on this we can say that polymer is again classified into three type the first and important if you can see is linear or straight chain polymer students just think linear or straight chain what it means that whatever polymer we have they are present in the linear means on the single line there is no branch which is present on them that we name it as a linear or straight chain polymer yes or no apart from that student can we say we have branched chain polymer just remember this word branch chain polymer means there is branching is present branching could be reason could be there is already some kind of branches there yes or no or maybe we can say or maybe we can say we have two or more functional group present in that because of that it is there is a presence of branching just see the diagram if you can see the diagram over here let me scroll down yes this is a i want you to answer this is a what type of polymer this is a straight chain polymer yes or no if you can see this part this is what student this is a branch polymer yes or no branches are there yes now the next let's talk about the cross link polymer student this cross link polymer is very important cross link polymer there is a more than more of the functional group is present higher linkage between the monomers will be seen in case of polymer in, in case of cross link polymer can we say this is the example of cross linked polymer again i am repeating myself based on structure we can say that polymer classified into two polymers are classified into three major type straight chain branch and the cross linked polymer yes or no i am hoping you understood this part very well next important classification is based on mode of polymerization student one important thing we have been discussed yet is about the molar mass yes we can say that monomers are the simple single unit they are combining together to form the macro molecule as we have discussed in the definition macro molecule giant molecule so can we say that its molar mass is going to increase because if we compare the molar mass of the monomer and the polymer there is a huge difference in their molar masses yes or no so how they are combining how monomers are combining to form the polymer that is mode of polymerization is our topic of discussion yes student so for that we can say that they are majorly majorly it's been classified into into majorly three type so now students let's talk about classification of polymer on the basis of mode of polymerization for that we can say that it has been classified into majorly three type yes as we can see first it addition polymer student please remember this part addition polymer they are also been called as chain growth polymer why because the polymers are been formed by the chain growth polymerization process the second is condensation polymer it is also called as step growth polymer again the same reason they have been formed by step growth polymerization process the third is ring opening polymerization as we can say if i talk about the addition polymerization as we know this when we use a word addition means monomers are been getting added when we say condensation some amount of smaller the smaller molecule is been removed yes so two is going to combine to form one molecule that is polymer yes or no ring opening is again one interesting topic we'll also discuss about that but for that first and important we need to discuss addition polymerization how the addition polymerization actually works that is chain growth polymerization so addition polymerization is occurring with the help of free radical mechanism yes children i know you had already studied free radical mechanism for the chlorination of methane in the 11th standard 
similar type of thing also happens over here for the addition polymerization first and important you need to understand addition polymerization process is shown by which type of monomer it is shown by that type of monomer which shows presence of unsaturation in it means we can say double bond in it yes or no so first and important thing you need to remember this part double bond containing monomers generally shows addition polymerization process yes now how it is happening it is happening by free radical mechanism again we know that free radical mechanism is happening majorly in three step which are this three step let's talk about that first first is chain initiation means we are beginning with our polymerization process this is the first step as i said it is happening the three major step first chain initiation but obvious we need the initiator to start this process yes or no and for that we can see that we have the we need the formation of free radical the initiator that is majorly used in this process are peroxide yes are peroxide just see this part this are the peroxide that we can use that is act as a initiator means that is acting as the catalyst yes what is happening we are getting that is peroxide bond there is breaking of that is taking place then again rearrangement that is taking place ultimately we are getting our free radical that is methyl free radical we have got from this acetyl peroxide yes or no student please remember this part because it is methyl free radical is going to be used in our second step yes so first step is chain initiation means we have got our free radical in the second step that is chain propagation means reaction started means what is happening generally the free radical if you can see over here attacks the carbon there is again formation of free radical that is we have got chain propagation that is our polymer is been formed the free radical that is again going to attack the another monomer so and so forth yes the next and important part that you need to understand is chain termination okay after so many step if we are seeing the chain termination there could be various reason for chain termination the major reason that is given to you is no free radical is left means what whatever free radical that we have they all get they all are getting combined together means there is no free radical there is no further propagation there is no further reaction that is going to take place yes so this last step was chain termination student what we are discussing we are discussing the classification of polymer based on based on polymerization process in that first that we we were discussing was addition polymerization it's time to discuss about the condensation polymerization process student as the word suggest condensation what that means whatever monomers we have they are getting combined to form the one polymer molecule yes or no for that we have one example over here this is a example of terylene yes student in that we can say we have ethylene glycol over here and we have terephthalic acid over here they are getting combined to form the terylene or we can say dacron yes or no you must be wondering which part of this two monomer is getting removed for that student there is one mcq that is also been asked alcohol and carboxylic acid combines to form the ester this is a ester molecule see this this is a ester linkage yes or no so this ester linkage has been formed hydrogen is lost from what carboxylic acid or alcohol what is your answer so if your answer is hydrogen is lost from alcohol and oh group is lost from carboxylic acid then you are absolutely right so we are removing the water molecule and because of this there is a ester linkage is between formed between oh group and carboxylic acid yes so oh group carboxylic group that is ethylene glycol over here and terephthalic acid over here combines to form dacron i'm hoping you understood this part very 
well. This was the third type of process that is condensation yet one another is remained which is that student that is ring opening polymerization as the word suggests definitely there is a ring which is getting opened to form the polymer. Yes or no student? The best example we can say this is an example of nylon 6 student. Yes, this is an example of nylon 6 that we can say. Detailed explanation for nylon 6 will do in our later chapter, later of the chapter. But right now just remember ring opening polymer example nylon 6. Okay, that is a cyclic ring that is getting opened to form the polymer. The next and important classification that we are going to study on the basis of intermolecular force. Student, I would say that till here, whatever we had discussed was very easy because from the name only we can say that what the process is happening, condensation, addition, straight chain polymer, condensed polymer and so and so forth. But this is the topic which you need to pay attention very well. Student, the polymer that we get shows different different kind of property and that property completely depends upon the intermolecular force that is present inside it. Yes or no? And based on this intermolecular force, the polymer again are classified into majorly four types. The first and important type is elastomer. Yes, student? So, which force of attraction, intermolecular force of attraction do you know? We can say that the weak one is van der Waal, hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole and much more. Yes or no? But out of this, the weakest one is van der Waal. So, in the case of elastomer, first and important thing, when the word comes elastomer, what we can say? It shows elastic property. Elastic property means what? If we apply stretch, if we, we are stretching it, if we apply the external force, what, what is going to happen with the polymer? It is going to stretch. Yes, but if we release, if we release the polymer, it will come to its original position. That is again shows similar kind of property as of the elastic. But for doing that student, don't you think the intermolecular force present in the polymer should be weak so that only if we stretch it, if we apply the external force, it is going to change its position, going to change its shape and again after releasing the force, external force, it is going to come to its original position. Yes or no? For that, remember this part, it shows weak force of attraction that is van der Waal forces of interaction. These are the properties of elastomer that you need to remember. Okay. So, first and important are elastomer. If you can see on the diagram, there is the example of elastomer they have given to us which is nothing but the rubber band. Yes or no? The next is fibers. Okay. As the word suggests fibers, can we say that this type of polymer is used as the fiber means they should have the strong tensile strength yes or no so means we can say this type of polymer should have stronger forces of interaction don't you agree with me this type of polymer should have strong forces of interaction yes or no so see this part this type of polymer is fibers possesses high tensile strength which is a property to have resistance for breaking under the tension. Yes or no? This is only possible because we have the strong force of interaction. Let's talk about hydrogen bonding and dipole-dipole interaction. Yes, student, we need to remember. Don't you think it's very easy? Fiber, strong tensile, more tensile strength, more bond should be there. More intermolecular bond should be there. Now, Apart from that student, as I said, there is four types. We have discussed only two types. The next is thermoplastic and let me show you this part both simultaneously. Thermoplastic and thermosetting. Can you see on your screen? Yes. So, what is thermoplastic and what is thermosetting? With one simple example, let's talk about. Thermoplastic are the polymer which is recyclable. 
can you see the bottle example they have given on every bottle you will see it's recyclable price also they have given why because it is recyclable okay so thermoplastic polymer is a type of polymer which can be recycled but if you talk about the thermo setting it is a type of polymer which cannot be recycled okay so we can say that why thermoplastic can be recyclable very simple example student very simple explanation we can say because when we heat it it will get melt okay but after cooling we can add it to any mold and it is going to acquire its shape yes but in case of thermo setting not the similar case so can we say that thermo plastic shows both kind of property that is of elastomer and the fiber yes or no so you can say that thermoplastic comes between elastomer and fiber yes or no student while thermo setting shows why why it is non recyclable the simple answer for this is in the case of thermo setting polymer there is cross linkage is present student i am hoping you remember what was cross linkage we had already discussed this part so because of the presence of cross linkage in them because of the presence of cross linkage in them it shows it shows non recyclable property means very hard it's very inert it is not going to melt so can we say that if it is not going to melt with the heating part also it can it it can have many applications few example of thermo settings are you need to remember this example student bakelite urea formaldehyde resin etc okay student very much important thermo setting examples so this was classification of polymer based on based on we can say that based on what intermolecular forces of interaction the next classification is based on different monomer used what type of mono monomers that we are using for the formation of polymer it is our topic of discussion if you can see we have the homo polymer as the word suggest can we say homo homo means same homo means single yes or no so we can say in the case of homo polymer we are using same type of monomer so if our polymer is formed by similar kind of monomers by similar homo means similar similar kind of monomers then we are going to name it as the homo polymer student please remember this part homo opposite is hetero but it is not the same case for the polymer chapter if we have more than two type two or more than two type of monomers that is getting combined to form the polymer then we are going to name it as the copolymer please remember some student make mistake over here it's not hetero it's copolymer yes that have the two or more types of repeating units are called copolymer yes or no few examples they have given to us we'll study in detail yes student so this was all about the fifth classification that is based on monomers over here in the 15.1 problem they have given you one question to solve you have you need to classify they have given you the monomer the polymer name you need to tell which type of polymer is homo polymer and which type of it is copolymer can we say just see this part the seventh one simple example is been formed by two type of monomer okay this buna s is an example of copolymer yes or no see other it has been formed by for example first second third fourth fifth it has been formed by only one type of monomer they will be come under the example of what student will come under the example of homo polymer and this two will come under the example of copolymer yes or no definitely don't you think it's very easy yes so let's talk about the last and important classification of polymer that is based on biodegradability means is the polymer is going to degrade that is biodegradable and non biodegradable yes or no the examples of biodegradable the detail explanation we will do later in this chapter 
yes student so first and important two mark question that we had discussed which is nothing but classification of polymer polymers can be classified into this six basic type what to write what to remember we had discussed i am hoping you understood classification of the polymer very well it is very important topic yes student let's talk about the next important topic some important examples of polymer which is first and important is rubber student rubber is what type of polymer synthetic or natural yes your answer is right rubber is a natural polymer that we get it from plant yes or no so what is the starting material matlab monomer used in case of rubber you need to remember this is isoprene is common name the iupac name is 2 methyl 1,3 butadiene so you need to remember rubber is made up of isoprene unit monomers are isoprene unit and its name as well as its structure yes student now student as we have discussed this is a natural rubber which it looks like and below they have given us the process by which rubber is been made okay i'm repeating myself this is how natural rubber looks like and this is the process by which natural rubber is made okay student so this is important part how this natural rubber is formed this is a monomer that as we have discussed isoprene unit starting material that is monomer it is used to form the polymer rubber how you can remember this reaction student i am giving you a shortcut trick for this first of all because there is a addition type of polymer don't you agree with me double bond is there so whenever it is getting added don't you think wherever the double bond which is there it is going to get converted into single bond addition yes or no so wherever double bond is there just see over here double bond is there it is going to get converted into single bond and wherever single bond is there to complete carbon ka valency it is going to show presence of double bond in it yes or no student so this is the simple way where how you can write the polymerization reaction okay so what is its name can we say we had already discussed it's 2 methyl 1,3 buta di yes now comes to the important mcq yes it's very important also comes in your entrance exam what is the important mcq student we can see over here just see over here in case of in case of rubber the natural rubber we can say has a cis configuration cis configuration of what a student that is we know that monomer that has been used Two methyl. Just remember this one. Two methyl, one comma three butadiene. The monomer which is present, if during the polymerization process, just see over here, if it is present in the cis position. I am highlighting this part. See, this is a cis position. They are present. Yes or no? This is cis position. All the are present under the cis position across the double bond. I am hoping you know what is cis and trans. Yes. So across the double bond, you need to see. if they both are present on the same side we need it as a cis simple explanation so if in the rubber they are showing cis conformation they are showing cis configuration we can say that it is rubber natural rubber but my question to you is what if they are showing what if they are showing trans configuration if they are showing trans configuration student you need to remember it is an example of gutta percha yes student gutta percha you need to remember why i am saying you it's very important because two two methyl 1,3 butadiene monomer is been used for both natural rubber as well as gutta percha but the only difference between them is cis and trans configuration so in the case of natural rubber they are present in the cis configuration in case of gutta percha they are present in the trans configuration very important please remember so another topic they have discussed with us is vulcanization of rubber very interesting topic vulcanization of rubber was discovered by the scientist name as charles goodyear in the year of 1839 just see the beauty student 1839 and still the discovery is so much 
the discovery that goodyear had made it's so much important that in our day to day life we can't you know ignore that okay our day to day life is completely based on it yes this invention so goodyear had discovered the vulcanization of rubber vulcanization of rubber it's an important example of cross link polymer please remember this part student vulcanization of rubber cross link polymer example it is that what is actually happening student the story behind it is something like that rubber okay if we get it from the rubber plant it's very liquid it's very it has no property only the rubber that we actually use in the liquid that we obtain from the plant shows huge variation in its property okay the amount of sulfur that we add decides its property and the whatever amount of sulfur we are adding to rubber natural rubber that is isoprene unit that the process is named as vulcanization of rubber so what actually we are doing in this we are actually increasing the network cross link we are producing the network cross link between the elastomers yes or no so again we know this rubber is an example of elastomer we are increasing the cross link as i said it's an example of cross link polymer okay the addition of amount the predecide amount of sulfur if we are adding we are name it as the vulcanization of rubber okay student so this is a process that is frequently used to improve the property of the natural rubber more amount of sulfur the more amount of sulfur more would be it it's like stiff, stiffness tough more inert and so and so forth yes student they have given us very brief idea to make this vulcanization topic interesting that do you know how this vulcanization process is actually happening so the next next important part that we are going to discuss is nothing about the polythene yes this is the very interesting topic that we use in our daily life but obvious without polythene our life is nothing yes or no so important how the polythene is made first and important thing is polythene looks like this something like this okay the important question over here how polythene is made so we have n times why i am writing n time because it's can be the any number monomer can be present in any number so there is ch2 double bond ch2 this is a monomer used for the preparation of polythene which is nothing but ethene molecule because of the polymerization process what is getting what is happening student this monomer is getting added but of course double bond is there they are going to show addition type of polymer so we are going to get show ch2 single bond ch2 important thing student please remember this part student make mistake over here only whenever you are writing the polymer you compulsory have to break this bond and write it n times why because while breaking this bond we are actually symbolizing that it is present in a continuous chain yes student this is the way you need to write the polymerization reaction for polythene or any polymerization reaction that we are going to discuss major is this cutting this bond by the bracket yes student now polythene one simple type we can say over here polythene is ldp and hdp type this ldp and L hdp symbolizes is low density polythene and high density polythene yes so that over here if we use polymer then then low density polymer and high density polymer yes student i want you to study ldp and hdp by comparing this both yes if you can see on your screen we have ldp and hdp let's compare this both and try to understand both the funda as the word suggests low density can we say that density is very less high density density is more yes or no but what type of catalyst is been used it is very important you need to remember the catalyst used in this process we can say that in case of ldp first of all let's discuss about the pressure temperature criteria also can you see over here the pressure is 1000 to 2000 atm the temperature that has been used important as i said catalyst in presence of initiator they have used the term 
that is oxygen or we can say peroxide in presence of oxygen and peroxide only this type of process this type of polymer is going to form yes so they are asking us how this polymerization process is actually happening by abstracting the hydrogen atom and they are forming the free radical children you must be wondering there is only ch2 double bond ch2 then how they would get the low density polymer means we are actually discussing about the branching that is we are getting let's talk about this example so hydrogen is getting abstracted and if you can see you have got one free radical over here can you see over here yes but obvious we know the stability of the free radical primary secondary tertiary tertiary is more as compared to secondary the least stable free radical is of primary so rearrangement is going to get, happen and this free radical is going to shift on the secondary carbon position but always hydrogen again rearrangement is going to happen and we are going to get secondary free radical over here if you can see over here yes or no student so this is the secondary free radical we have got and but obvious then chain propagation is going to happen from this free radical carbon only and from that we are going to get our low density polymer i'm hoping you understood this part very well yes student now let's talk about the high density as the word suggests density is more how density is more let's try to understand this part first for that the catalyst they have used is ziegler natta catalyst very important student name ziegler natta catalyst is what which contain triethylene let me zoom this part also it's triethyl just see ziegler natta catalyst triethyl aluminum with what titanium tetrachloride this is ziegler natta catalyst you need to remember we are going to use for hdp high density polymer the pressure that we are going to use is 6 to 7 atm temperature again they have given in this range yes student so this is all about high density polymer that is addition normal addition is going to take place to form the polymer yes they are also given us the uses and properties of hdp uses are the more important okay so you also need to remember the uses of ldp okay now they are they have given us few more examples few more examples of the polymer first i am hoping you you come to know this example very well this is the example of polyethene the monomer it is used is ethene yes or no student what if what if instead of this ch2 instead of this ch2 if i am writing let me rub this part first if i am writing f there is fluorine yes or no so student instead of ch2 if i am writing cf2 then the polymer name also and the polymer also changes this is an example of this is an example of very interesting example this is example of teflon can you see over here the example of teflon teflon made up of can we say student teflon is made up of just see this name we have four fluorine atoms so we can say tetra fluoro ethene yes or no so this is here is it's very easy so ethene instead of ethene we have written instead of h2 we have written f2 instead yes or no so this is about the teflon i'm hoping you find this topic very interesting major important is use of teflon yes student how where teflon is used it's very important one mark question can be asked based on uses yes so every polymer use just keep keep in mind in where where we can use this polymer so teflon used in making non stick cookware oil seals uh, gaskets etc yes or no student now again we have acrylonitrile over here forms polyacrylonitrile let me explain you from this part only yes student as i said polymerization chapter is interesting because you just need to remember the monomer over here and polymer if it is double bond just get 
get get them added okay just add the monomers will get your polymer so can we say over here let me rub this part why i'm showing you complete explanation over here only so that you will have the idea how easy it is so we have ch2 ch again cn this is a structure of acrylonitrile okay this is a structure of acrylonitrile Okay, student but no worries this acrylonitrile is going to combine to form polyacrylonitrile so again the structure would be ch2 ch and this cn this is a structure of polyacrylonitrile don't you think it's very easy yes similarly student if we have the cl over here then we are going to name it as the vinyl chloride polyvinyl chloride this pvc pvc pipe you must have heard okay so this is a for polyvinyl chloride yes or no student so this was example of few basic polymer which shows addition polymer addition polymerization type of reaction so we had discussed about the polyvinyl chloride we have discussed for the polyacrylonitrile now it's time to discuss polyamide polymer student the question also can be asked in mcq part tell us the example of polyamide polymer yes so amide group has to be there so amide group can we say we are going to get the amide group how just see if we have the carboxyl group and the amine group we are going to use a polymer we are going to use a monomer that contains two carboxyl group that is dicarboxylic acid and diamines we are going to use for polyamide polymer simple polyamide made up of carboxyl group and amine group yes or no so two examples we are going to study in case of polyamide over here first is nylon 6,6 if you can see on your screen is nylon 6,6 let me tell you one shortcut trick for this how i remember as you can see on the screen nylon 6,6 so there is 2,6 over here the 2,6 symbolizes the two monomers this is the example of copolymer by the way let me tell you that part the two different type of monomers we have both contains total carbon equals to 6 so 6 from one monomer 6 from another that comes to 6,6 yes two monomer that we used first is adipic acid as i said dicarboxyl group coh coh on both the side the remaining one will have 4 ch2 group another is hexamethylene diamine as you were such as diamine means 2 nh2 group hexamethylene means ch2 six times but obvious acid and base combines together to form the salt hydrogen is going to lost from here getting added over here and we will get this type of salt yes similar is going to happen from from the end hydrogen is getting lost hydrogen they are getting one hydrogen and forming this type of complex but obvious at the high temperature water molecule is getting lost from this complex and we are getting the nylon 6,6 polymer student you can use one shortcut trick over here if you want and the shortcut trick says shortcut trick if you want you can use one shortcut trick that is saying that suppose if you want you don't remember if you don't want to remember this step what we can say that the starting direct answer is oh from here and hydrogen loses from here yes or no oh from here and hydrogen over here you will get the final answer like this yes or no so you can remove the water molecule like this and get the final answer but but always in reality this is actually formed by by forming a complex that is acid base type of reaction because of this the complex is being formed and from that water molecule is getting yes student this was all about nylon 6,6 monomers you need to remember what is that adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine so let's talk about the next next polyamide example which is nylon 6 as i said nylon 6 contains total 6 carbon atom how i remember the but our starting material over here is e caprolactam just write c 
ONH, COONH group is a mild group, polyamide, yes. So just write COONH group over here. Total carbon has to be 6. 1C, one, one carbon is over here. The remaining 5 is from the CH2. So joint NH and CO group with this 5 CH2 group. Yes or no? And form the ring. Yes. As I said, ring, this comes under ring opening polymerization process. Yes or no? So what is happening generally student, the bond over here between NH and CO is getting break. Yes, so the bond is over here, you can see it is getting broken out. If we break the bond between NH and CO, we will get the open chain. Open chain, one end has NH, another end has CO, but always in between there is 5 CH2 group. Yes. So this is the starting material for nylon 6. If we have many monomers of this, if we combine like this, we get the nylon 6. So this is an e capital atom starting material. We have nylon 6 obtained by opening the ring. Yes, student. So we had discussed two examples of polyamide, nylon 6, 6 and nylon 6. Now let's talk about the polyester. Polyester example is Pterylene or Decron. Yes, starting material need to remember it's ethylene glycol and tabthylic acid. Yes, so again we can say ester we can get from alcohol and carboxylic acid. Student, I have a question for you. This is which type of polymer? Addition, condensation, ring opening. If your answer is condensation, you are absolutely right. So example of polyester, example of condensation polymer. Okay. Again, the question as we have discussed, hydrogen is lost from here and OH group from here. But obvious from alcohol, carboxylic acid, water is been lost to form this ester linkage. Yes or no? Okay. What you have to do? You just you just have to write the monomers. But obvious, you can also lose the hydrogen from here and OH group from here and just combine the monomers, yes, to get the polymer. Was it easy? Yes, definitely. The only thing you need to remember is monomer. So again, for polyester, example, Decron, whose also name is Pterylene, monomers, ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid. Terephthalic acid, you can say benzene ring, Again, COH, COH on both the sides. Yes. So, this was all about polyester group. Now, the next important class of polymers that we have is phenol formaldehyde polymer or its related polymer. The first important example that we have is bakelite. Student, do you remember bakelite we had already discussed in case of crosslink polymer? Yes or no? So, bakelite is an example of cross-link polymer. How we can get bakelite? As the name suggests, this phenol formaldehyde polymer. This process is happening because in the this process is happening in presence of acid and base. Need to remember this part, okay? There is complete mechanism. It is out of our discussion, out of our syllabus, topic of discussion right now. But you can say the catalyst used over here, acid or base, forms thermosetting molding powder first of all just see when we are combining phenol and formaldehyde the first thing that we are going to get is nevolec okay just see over here novolec that we are going to get and from this novolec we are going to get the bakelite how this is actually happening let's try to understand with the reaction only okay student on your screen there is a explanation how the bakelite polymer is formed they have shown they have discussed with us uh, don't get scared it's actually very easy can you see this is the phenol that we have this is the formaldehyde that we have yes or no how i remember let me tell you that part so ch this phenol which is there again ch2o is there as i said there's a complex mechanism is happening because in presence of acid and base we don't have to go with that the shortcut key that we can use the hydrogen on this carbon ortho para position because OH is ortho para directing. Hydrogen of this getting added to over here and this CH2 will attack over here. So the 
thing that we are going to get would be nothing but CH2 this from CH2 over here O and hydrogen from here over here there is CH2. So just remember one shortcut key for this whenever you have formaldehyde as a monomer it has been getting added to another monomer being attacked with to the another monomer instead of formaldehyde you just write CH2 OH shortcut key. So whenever formaldehyde add CH2 OH whenever formaldehyde add CH2 OH as we have discussed as we have discussed it is OH group is ortho para directing so we have CH2 OH ortho ortho para ortho para, um, all these right yes so now we have the monomer for the preparation of Novolac this is a Novolac okay we are going to get the monomer by this reaction for the preparation of Novolac what is generally happening student let me explain you this part also so in this case uh, let me draw one simple structure over here the another monomer which is nothing but CH2OH yes so hydrogen from this will remove with this OH can we see that yes or no so HOH will get removed the bond that has been formed is with the CH2 group yes so again this OH you can see from here also this H and OH remove this part yes so again HOH HOH water molecule is getting lost in this condensation type of polymerization process and from that we get the novo lack polymer yes and from this novo lack due to different different arrangement complex reaction at high temperature we are going to get our bakelite polymer you just need to remember phenol formaldehyde polymer example novo lack and from that we get bakelite yes so now student let's talk about the another important polymer which is buna s yes student you need to remember its starting material which is styrene just see over here the buna s part which is styrene that is over here styrene is benzene above that ch double bond ch2 group so here c6h5 it's nothing but phenyl ring benzene ring they have written over here so we have benzene ring one hydrogen is replaced by ch double bond ch group and with that we have 1 comma 3 butadiene but obvious student if we can say addition type of polymerization process is going to happen and what 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 student can we say this is going to add over here again this will add by the another monomer so again the polymerization process will continue and we are going to get this type of polymer the simple trick I can say to you is that wherever you have double bond make it single and wherever single make it double so over here where is double bond where is double bond make it single double make it single and wherever single make it double bond just see this is the 1 comma 3 butadiene structure so we are because it was single bond to complete carbon valency we have double bond over here similarly so and so forth polymerization process will continue now let's talk about one more for one more formaldehyde polymer which is left which is melamine melamine is again formed again the monomer it is used is melamine and formaldehyde I have already taught you the trick whenever you have formaldehyde make it as CH2OH make it as, as CH2OH yes or no so again one hydrogen less from this amine and add the CH2 group CH2OH yes student again this process will continue by removal of OH group from all these sides yes or no this was all about the melamine example we had discussed two major example of formaldehyde polymer one is phenol formaldehyde bakelite example and the another is melamine formaldehyde polymer yes or no okay after that we have discussed the buna s apart from that it's very much important for you to discuss to remember neoprene unit also the neoprene starting material if you can see is chloroprene 2 chloro 1 comma 3 butadiene can i say it is just look 
similar to the natural rubber natural rubber starting material was isoprene which was nothing but 2 methyl 1 comma 3 butadiene so instead of methyl you have chloro over that becomes neoprene yes the process is exactly the process is exactly similar to the natural rubber that we have discussed like this they are saying vulcanization of neoprene is done by magnesium oxide you can see what is happening you if you if you want to remember this mgcl2 bond is getting lost and oxygen comes in between okay that is an oxide linkage oxygen link is there between the two neoprene units okay so vulcanization of neoprene done by magnesium oxide yes student so then we have the viscous rayon viscous rayon is a little bit complicated process let me explain you with this reaction only Viscous rayon is an example of regenerated polymer. Over here, this viscous rayon is generally something, student, you can say, where we can say an iron free. You don't have to iron the clothes. It's, it's that type of polymer that we get it from this viscous rayon. So, there is no need to do the press of it, no need to do its iron. They are not going to get this. So, let's talk about the viscous rayon what we can say student we have the cellulose pulp over here cellulose we have written cell over here cellulose we are going to treat it with the base NaOH to get some kind of salt we are going to combine we are going to treat it with carbon disulfide to get the xenthate of it and apart from that we are going to do its hydrolysis to get the viscous rayon that is regenerated polymer of cellulose yes or no Okay, so this will come under the example of what? Semi-synthetic polymer. Yes or no? Now comes one important topic which is nothing but molecular mass and degree of polymerization of polymer. We are going to use a word degree of polymerization which is nothing but DP. Now, can we say that the mass of monomer is going to be decided by the mass of what? Mass of polymer is going to be decided by the mass of monomer. But if we have different type of monomers, can we say we are going to take the average mass of monomer to calculate the mass of polymer? And that the term that we are going to use it over here, the molecular mass of polymer depends upon degree of polymer. That is degree of polymerization that is DP because we are using different different type of monomer. That is number of monomer units in the polymer molecule that we are using yes or no for that we are using one term dp degree of polymerization remember this part so why dp term is more important student to carry out one particular reaction there should be need to we need to have the particular value of dp if it is very less so can we say there is a force of interaction is very less we will not get our desired product because it, it would be very low property. It would be brittle, it will break easily. If you can say low mechanical strength would be there. But if we have the high DP value, okay, if we have the high DP value, then again, again the property would be, the strength would be much. It is very difficult for us to handle it, okay. That is in manageable, unmanageable, we can say that. For that, can we say DP value, that is degree of polymerization, that is critical degree of polymerization term has been used, should be, should have the minimum value, it should not be very less, it should not be very more. Yes, so it is very much important when we do the polymerization process. Okay, so polymers containing hydrogen bonding, it's a very important topic. You need to remember, wherever hydrogen bonding is there, it shows low value of critical degree of polymerization as compared to weak intermolecular force. For example, let's talk about Van der Waal. Yes or no? So, they have given you one question, 15.2, where they have asked you to about, about the critical degree of polymerization of nylon 6 and polythene. But obviously, we need to answer it with the help of the topic that we have discussed, hydrogen bonding. Because of the hydrogen bonding, it shows low degree of critical polymerization value. Yes or no? 
सो नाउ द लास्ट एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज बायोडिग्रेडेबल पॉलीमर एज यू नो दिस वर्ड बायोडिग्रेडेबल इट शुड डिग्रेड ओके सो वी हैव मेजरली फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल पी एच बी वी ओके पी एच बी वी द मेड अप मेड अप ऑफ द मोनोमर्स यूज ओवर यर बीटा हाइड्रोक्सी ब्यूटरिक एसिड अनदर इज बीटा हाइड्रोक्सी वेलरिक एसिड इफ यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन यस तो पी एच बी वी द फुल फॉर्म इट इज गिवन टू यू पॉली बीटा हाइड्रोक्सी ब्यूटरेट को बीटा हाइड्रोक्सी वेलरेट वाई दे हैव सीन अल्फा बीटा ओवर यर बिकॉज ऑफ द ओ एच ग्रुप पोजिशन यस स्टूडेंट तो दिस इज अ सिंपल रीजन फॉर दैट दे हैव यूज अल्फा बीटा वर्ड एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वेन एवर वी हैव अल्कोहल ग्रुप वी हैव द कार्बोक्सिल ग्रुप वॉट वी कैन से अगेन इट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म द एस्टर सो ओ एच from here h from here similarly h from here oh from here remove this and you will get your phbv polymer yes student this was all about the first biodegradable polymer that is phbv the next is nylon 2 nylon 6 the monomers used are this yes what monomers we are going to use glycine and amino e amino acid that is e amino caproic acid that we are going to use for nylon 2 and nylon 6 yes student so this was all about the polymerization process they have tried to summarize if you can see the table on your screen uh this is table 15.1 let me zoom out this so this is the complete table they have given us that is list of uh, monomers that the polymer and its application student remember use of uses are important application of polymers are important yes student so this was all about introduction to polymer chapter from study life i'm hoping you find this video very helpful and interesting for such a helpful video stay tuned with study life thank you